<laughs> oh, hi. Oh, you're keen, aren't you? Um, yeah, sorry, I've just got some dishes to work through. Um, my wife's been away for a couple of days, and um, as you can see, I've been, been living out of frozen, frozen Tupperware containers. Um, I'll just get this done. She's nearly due home, so I'll finish this off, and uh, I'll get straight back onto the video, okay? Alright, so they were all done before she got home, so bullet dodge there. Um, I'd like to start out, uh, I've got a few, I've had a few rules queries and uh, rules questions come up, so I'd just like to address those first. The first comes from one of my players. Um, he asked if when you kill a monster do you actually receive any monetary reward. Um, the answer to that is no, but there is an exception. Um, in the standard rules you don't. Um, you only get treasure from uh, searching for it and, and finding it. Um, but there is one adventure in the standard rule book that uh, offers a bounty for every uh, monster that you kill. So there is some ways where you can get it, but in this adventure that you don't get any reward for, uh, for killing a monster specifically. The next question comes from Run Cornlights, and he asked me a question over the YouTube channel. Um, he wants to know, do I have a choice when I'm moving the monsters, or do they just move the maximum allotment of, uh, of movement that they have towards the nearest character? I do have a choice. I can move monsters however I want to. Um, but what I like to do is, um, I like to move monsters as I feel they would move. I, I like to almost role-play the monsters as if, um, you know, they, they react as intelligently as they normally would. Um, so, for things, brainless things like skeletons, um, I'll just sort of move them towards, uh, towards characters as, as, as fast as they can. Some of the other enemies that, that they'll come across, I'll treat a bit more, uh, a bit differently. Give them a bit more, uh, make them a bit more sneaky, I suppose, a bit more devious. Um, yeah, I, I did have a plan in mind with that skeleton, um, and as you'll see, the characters have completely uh, ruined that plan with their choices of what they're going to do this turn. Um, yeah, so I suppose uh, with that, I guess we'd better get back to the game. Um, I am not wearing my correct attire though, so give me a moment and I'll, I'll get into that. And welcome back to Melar's Maze. This is where we left the players at the end of turn two. One thing to remember this turn is that Lothario the Dwarf still has uh, Rock Skin cast upon her, which is giving her an extra two dice in defense. Now she's going to have that spell on her until she takes uh, a body point of damage. So at the moment that hasn't happened yet, so she's still got that spell in effect. The first character to have his turn is Elrois, as usual. Uh, he's said that he wants to move up and open the door. Uh, once in that room, he's going to do some searching if there's not something in there that's immediately obvious that he needs to kill. So he'll move up to the door to start with and open the door. Alright, having opened the door, Elrois finds the room to be completely empty. Um, he's probably a little bit suspicious about that, so what he's going to do is he's going to step inside the room and he's going to have a search for secret doors and traps. And Elrois performs his search and he finds that there is... a pit trap in the floor of the room. Now he's found it, but he can't do anything about it. He's had his two actions, and he wouldn't be able to disarm it anyway because he's not the dwarf. Speaking of the dwarf, here comes Lothario for her turn. Now she said she wants to search the hallway that she's in for secret doors and traps. Now this was my quite clever plan because I was hoping in the excitement of killing the uh, skeleton that they'd forget to do that, but of course they're smarter than I gave them credit for, so they have searched, and having searched, this is what she finds. Now I've placed that tile there to indicate uh, there is a trap in that square. It, the, the game doesn't come with a tile to indicate that particular type of trap, but it is a rock fall trap. Now, if someone had have walked onto that square, uh, a large slab of rock would have fallen down behind them, thus sort of sealing them in that section of the dungeon by themselves. They wouldn't have been able to get back across. Um, but unfortunately they have searched and now found it, so that's a bit of a pity. Now that Lothario has searched for traps, uh, she wants to move to the nearest trap so that she can disarm it in her next turn. So she's going to move next to the pit trap in the room with Elrois. So being very careful to avoid the trap, she positions herself, ready to disarm it in the next turn. Now we'll move on to the Barbarian. Now Wilhelm has recovered from his lost time from searching for gold, so he's going to move through the secret door into the new room uh, that Barabel has discovered. And when he's in there, he's going to search for treasure. Searching for treasure, Wilhelm finds a piece of ancient parchment on the desk amongst the skulls and dried up bits of innards that he finds there. Um, the paper is so old that it's, um, it almost crumbles in his hands as he picks it up. 
He reads on it though in a very, very neat script. I shall have to do something about those orcs in the east. Maybe I'll use my statue against them. So, there's some more cryptic messages for them to figure out. Um, but there is no actual assigned treasure for this room, so what I'm going to do is shuffle my treasure cards again. And we'll draw the top card. And it's more gold. Amidst the clutter, the old rags, the greasy fur robes and soiled blankets, you find 25 gold coins. Record the money on the back of your character sheet. So Wilhelm's getting himself quite a little hoard going now. Um, that's the end of his turn, so now we'll move on to Barabel. Barabel's pretty keen to get into this room and join uh, Wilhelm. He's going to move uh, into the room adjacent to that door. He's going to open that door to see what's on the other side. Uh, he's also going to search the room that uh, Wilhelm's standing in for secret doors and traps, see if he can find anything on his way through. And he finds lots of doors. There's two doors through there. There's also a blockage in the passage just behind this door here. Um, and now he searches for secret doors and traps. He doesn't find any in the room that he's currently in, but good on him for trying anyway. And that's another turn over and done. I guess we're waiting eagerly for the moves of the, uh, of the players for turn four now. Um, unfortunately no dice rolled that turn. I know that's going to disappoint some who are fans of my little dice tower, but who knows, it'll probably be in the next turn hopefully if we see some more monsters on the board. Um, I'd just like to take this opportunity to say it's, it's probably going to be my last video for at least a week, maybe a little bit more. Um, the wife and I are taking a little bit of a sabbatical down along the coast, so that'll be really nice for us. Um, but I d don't think I'm not going to be gaming while we're away. I'm packing as many uh, board games and card games as I can into the car. Um, yeah, so I will see you all in a little while. Um, and until then, my name's Tinny, and thank you for watching Tortuga. Thank you.